Here we are. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Red Pill the Miles Podcast. It's your boy Chingo Bling. I'm coming at you live from Casa de Bling Studios. We got the home studio set up. It's going to allow us to zoom in a bunch of really cool, interesting people. Um, like today, I'm excited about today, man, because um, I love coffee. I love business. I love collaborating with cool people. We have Aaron Mesa, the owner of Grind Ops Coffee. What's up, Big Doc? What's going on? How's it going, everybody? Uh, for those that don't know, man, um, Aaron is a coffee... How would I call you, brother? Like a coffee connoisseur? <laughs> Just uh, somebody that enjoys coffee and um, enjoys making good coffee. I don't know the, the perfect word for it, and uh, that's what I go with. Yeah, man. So we collaborated on the Red Pill Blend. Uh, this was a really cool project, man, because I, I absolutely love coffee. And uh, it, it was great working with you, man. Uh, we sold a whole bunch of these red We're pill sure. blends. Red pill blends. Um, so how'd you get into the coffee game? <sighs> okay. Uh, long story short, I couldn't find coffee that I liked. It's just I tried everything. I was out there. I would try. Finally, one day, I was... Heading to work, I stopped to get coffee, and it, you know, tasted like garbage. I was like, "All right, you know." Once I got home, I figured out. All right, started looking on the forums to see how to, you know, make my own coffee. You know, I'm a tinker by nature. I love tinkering with stuff. So, you know, this kind of, you know, really jumped in, me into it. Uh, it's a big wormhole. <laughs> uh, I didn't realize how how much of a wormhole it was, but uh i you know different roasting methods different beans from from different locations from different regions um i you know i talked to a lot of other guys that that knew what they were doing and that's really how it took off i bought my first roaster and then i bought you know from there i bought a different one and then i was just roasting for myself i really wasn't you know for commercial purposes uh and then uh, I would go to a lot of uh, shooting competitions and uh, some of the guys would be like, hey, man, can you bring me a, you know, a bag? And I was like, all right, like I would just roast up some stuff and, you know, give it to them in a Ziploc bag. I wasn't really, <laughs> you know, uh, trying to sell it. Um, and then one day just a buddy of mine says, man, you should really sell it. I was like, well, you know, I'm fine where I'm at, you know, kind of deal. Um, but then. Little by little, that that idea was stuck in me, you know, and and it just kept, well, you know, maybe. And then I was like, well, let me look into what it, you know, what requirements are needed, and and, and like that, it just kind of spiraled and uh, in a good way, and uh, that's where we're at now. You know, we're actually coming up on two years being a uh, grind ops coffee company, so that's that's cool. Um, very grateful for you know, anybody that supports us, for, you know, especially anybody that wants to collaborate with us more importantly. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been a cool, fun, interesting ride. Yeah, man. I, it's, it's interesting because as I work with you, I got to kind of see like, okay, not only does this dude nerd out about yeah. coffee, not <laughs> only does he get it because we really didn't even have to go back and forth a whole bunch. Like you were like, all right, bro, uh, for your project, like you asked me a few questions. Are you into these kind of blends? Do you like this? Bruh. I was like, uh huh. Yeah, I was like, uh, I think I like dark, you know, because um, because we would drink a lot of Bustelo, like dark, yeah. super roasted espresso, you know. Uh, my my wife, she likes all that strong bitter stuff. So do I. And I was yeah. like, yeah, man, send me some darks. He's like, all right, I'm gonna throw in a uh, a medium dark in there as well. Yeah, and it was it was just so smooth, like. Like, I, I don't even, I'm not going to lie. I don't know a whole lot about like the notes of this and the, there's a, this right. and a that, yeah. but, but I, it totally, uh, uh, it totally made sense. I was like, oh, wow. This is well, a really, it, mm -hmm. yeah. It's funny that you, when, when you, you know, when you asked to collaborate, uh, when we got together for that project, I was actually working on that particular roast. Uh, and I was like, so that's why when you threw out a darker roast, I was like, I, I, I'm going to throw this in here and see what you think and you know obviously we can take it from there um but i was like i, I think you, you're gonna enjoy this one it's a little bit more bougie uh style uh beans and from the several regions that we get it from but um i think it's totally worth it for the flavor profile that it has 
um, especially for for collaboration purposes. I think this is just the way to go. Um, so you know, obviously, give your you know your fans and and everybody else. I'm a fan myself. Obviously, I, I reached out to you. So yeah, I've been a fan for a very long time. So uh, being from you know the RGV Rio Grande Valley, uh, you know I you know a few years back I heard about you and I was like, man, this guy's hilarious. You know, uh, and so. Yeah, it was just one day I said, oh, I'm going to reach out and, uh, you know, it was more of a thank you. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the honest truth. It was just more of a thank you for giving us some good laughs, you know, my, myself, my wife, uh, my friends, you know. So, um, you know, that's that's really how the relationship you know, slash friendship started. Oh, yeah. That that first initial care package, it was like it was like, oh, man, there, there was one in there. I think you call it like frag or something. Yeah, frag. Frag out. Is that the one that's like hella caffeine? Yes, that one. My wife, she really liked that one. And um, my buddy Juan Perez, he's a comedian and uh he helps me with social media and he's hooked on like C4 and stuff like that. And if we're ever at a coffee shop, he's he's just like, Man, just give me something sweet, something strong, whatever. Yeah. But uh w- we're gonna educate him, but I think it's super cool, man, that you kind of started like out the trunk, almost like I picture like a um the people that get into beer, uh, yeah. like craft beer, like doing that stuff in their garage. Yeah. Um, you know, is that how it was? Like you would spend time like after work or like just nerding yeah. out? Exactly. Exactly like that. And it almost consumes me. You know, I'd be at work and I would think of something and I'm like, let me do a quick search, you know, and I'll get back to it once I get home. Right. Uh, changing this, changing that. And by the way, I started the same way with drinking monsters, C4, all that stuff. Um, and that was, I, I also enjoyed coffee, obviously, but this was another way to kind of mix both worlds of something that I enjoy drinking, which is coffee, uh, iced coffee. Um, and also giving me that energy. That's the whole, actually frag out was not meant to be out sold to anybody. That was mine. That was my specific, uh, blend for myself. I honestly didn't think anybody would like it. Uh, it ended up being, a really good blend um so but yeah going back to that it was a lot of you know just tinkering figuring out i mean you can really nerd out temperature what what temperatures you're roasting at what uh you know the specific bean the the how long you leave it there um even the 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 the, the grind how when you when you grind it up is change can change the flavor profile i mean we're talking about nerding out at this yeah. point you know uh and so i was like okay i can go really far in that or i can kind of back up a little bit and make something that everybody's gonna enjoy you know and mm-hmm. that, that was my plan was I, I i don't like bitter coffee that's my personal preference i know people that do uh it is not mine so that was one thing that i really wanted was a very smooth profile um and so that took some, you know, time figuring out. Um, but once we got it going, well, I say we, my wife, uh, she was my my taste tester. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, yeah. And she's the same thing. She doesn't like bitter coffee. Um, so it was kind of like she would drink and she'd be like, no. I was like, okay, go back to the drawing board, you know, uh, which is good. You know, you, you need somebody there because I could say, oh, this is the best cup of coffee, you know, for me. But, you know, mm-hmm. the, obviously best is always subjective, but I need other people to tell me, especially if I was going to put it on the market, you know. So I kind of gathered up a couple of my friends, my buddies uh, that are coffee drinkers, and I just send them, hey, t- try this out and give me an honest opinion. Just don't tell me it's good because you're my friend. You know, I, I need an honest opinion because uh, I want to put this out. And that's how it started. Obviously, it wasn't one day to the next, but it 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 kind of feels like it now that I'm two years in, mm-hmm. it does feel like it, you know? Uh, so I, I'm grateful for that. I'm, I'm grateful that I, I followed through with it as well, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, from working with you, I learned that like, yo, this dude actually, he's like a pretty good photographer and, and good at like, I don't know if you use Photoshop or what, but like just branding in terms of, cause I was like, yo, did you take these pictures? Like what the hell is this? Yeah. Uh, everything, uh, usually, I would say about 95% of the pictures are taken by me. And then 
obviously the ones that I come out in, I, I don't really take those. Uh, but, um, yeah, either way, I do edit them. I use Lightroom to edit some of the pictures. We kind of go, I kind of go for a specific style. Um, so that's kind of what I like. Um, as speaking of that, I just bought another camera uh, this morning. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. Well, speaking of, of that, because I kind of wanted to level up the game, you know, a little bit more. Um, and, uh, but yeah, that's, I actually enjoy all of it. Like, I, I didn't know anything about how to build a website. I didn't know anything about uh, uh, taking pictures. I didn't know anything. Uh, YouTube University was what taught me. Oh yeah, that's how I'm learning. That's that's one of the ways I'm learning jujitsu. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you know, at least you can learn something, right? Uh, uh, practical is a, a different story, but I, yeah. but yeah, for, um, I, I I literally did not know how to build a website. I built the entire website myself, um, and it was one of those things. I like being involved in everything, so I don't like just being like, "Hey, man, can you do this for me?" And I'll pay you, and mm -hmm. then something goes down. How do I fix this? You know, I, I hate I hate being that guy. So for me, it was always like, no, I need to learn back to being a tinker. I mm -hmm. need to learn how to do this myself. Uh, at least have a basic knowledge of how these these things work. Uh, so sometimes I'm I, I like asking a lot of questions, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not necessarily because I'm being nosy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I want, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I I genuinely want to learn. You know. Um, so it, it's funny. That's just how I've, I've always been. Um, I, I studied engineering when I was younger, but obviously I didn't follow through with that. But I still have that mindset, you know, where I, I like to know how things work. Yeah. And, and understanding all the different variables, like you were saying earlier, like you can go through all these different steps, roasting and and sourcing and curating the beans and this and that. But then if, the way the person brews it at home. You're right. Depending on the method, the temperatures, the the time, like all that stuff is going to affect what you end up tasting. Exactly. And that back to what I was saying, where I could have started out and made a specific blend. Hey, this only goes on pour over, right? But realistically, who does that? Not many people. So I, I had to back up, uh, back off a little bit on trying to go so uh, deep in that end, where I was like, I just want to create a good tasting all around coffee that you don't have to add so much stuff to it to make it taste good. Back yeah. to monsters and C4s and all that, that are, are just filled with stuff that you probably don't know and may be bad for one. I don't know, but uh, that's kind of where I want it, where I, I didn't want to add so much junk to my coffee to make it taste good. Yeah, because this one, bro, this one's just straight black. This one tastes so good. Yeah. I mean, you, you can add a splash of milk or whatever, and it'll just enhance uh, what you already did. But every, once in a while, I throw some creamer on there. Every once in a while, I was like, oh, you know, maybe I'm in the mood for some creamer, you know? Yeah. Uh, but it's rare. Um, but I do enjoy it, you know, especially if I'm going to do like a iced coffee, I'll throw some creamer in there, um, kind of make it. A little sweeter, maybe mix it with some protein, you know, if I'm going to the gym or something like that. That way I can have a little bit of everything. Oh, yeah. That's the killer combo right there. So you, yeah. you're you're ex-military, correct? No, no, I, I'm actually not. I'm 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 ex. I just retired from a federal uh, agency. I was a uh, U.S. Customs and Border Protection for oh, okay. years. Yeah. So is that different? So that's more of the, on the custom side. That's not Border Patrol. <laughs> Yeah, correct. That's the we're the same agency. We just wear different uniforms. Uh, oh. Blue, and, we're blue. Uh, we're at the uh, the uh, ports of entry. Anytime like you cross a bridge, especially down here, if you cross a bridge or come through an international airport, you go through customs. Uh, if you're going, you know, the other guys are border patrol, so they they work more on the riverside on 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 the actual. Uh, well, in Texas, the river, anywhere else is different. Yeah. But uh, I was a canine handler for 11 of those years. Um, I loved it. Well, how many How many years did you do that? 14. Oh, uh, oh. as a canine handler, I did 11 years. But but total in customs, 14? 14. Man, so what is that like? Like dealing with animals and, and teaching them their, their job? And... It's awesome. I love it. 
yeah, I, I, I grew up with a lot of uh, animals, uh, dogs, cats, ducks, turtles, you know, a oh, lot wow. of those, that stuff. <laughs> um, so, yeah, was, yeah. So when 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 I when I became, uh, you know, a federal officer, I, I saw the canine program and it really intrigued me and and uh, it's very re- reward. Uh, you and your dog just it's your partner and he'll do anything for you is, you know, and vice versa. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's very rewarding. You're out there, you're, you're doing something for your country. So it, it not only is it awesome having a cool partner, like a dog, it's also, uh, you know, if you know, you're doing something for your country, your, your state and your community, you know, you go home with the satisfaction of knowing that you did something uh, productive and, 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 you know, you're, you're, you're safeguarding, you know, your, your community. Uh, oh yeah, I, especially I was, yes. Go ahead, go ahead. I, I was very successful in, in in catching a lot of good stuff or bad stuff, taking yeah. all that stuff off off the of the you know streets, um, and so you know I'm proud of that. I'm proud of all those accomplishments. But you know, just like everything is, there's always a point where I I, I wouldn't say is this it. That's not the 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 thought process that went into me. It was more like, um. You know, I don't like getting religious with people, but it's like if, if God gives you a a, a different, uh, I don't want to use the word option, but another view, mm-hmm. maybe it's change that. Like, I, I feel like I've I've done what I needed to do. I, 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 I And so it was time to move on. OK, yeah, that's interesting. So were the were the animals trained already or you had to also get on the same page? Um, so we have our, our training facility and they pre-train the, the dogs there before the handlers become, you know, before the handlers get there. So they, but they have very little training and then we get there and then you have to train as a team together. And then, uh, it's either you, you pass or you don't, <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. it's, uh, I think they just changed it, but it was 13 weeks of training, uh, with the dog. Uh, it was fun. Uh, but it's also, uh, very tough. Mm. Uh, I think at the time that I went, when I first started going was back in 2011, 2010. Um, I think there was like a 50% pass rate. So, oh, wow. Yeah. So who would fail the yeah. human or the dog? <laughs> it's always going to be the human. Uh, They're never going to blame. Them. Uh, uh, so when they go through the selection process prior to us getting there, they pick the dogs that are going to work in our environments and are going to work with the way we're going to train them versus just picking any dog. Um, so, you know, if, if let's just call it this, if a dog fails, that means that the instructor failed. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's never going to be a dog, you know? Um, but <sighs> there are a couple instances where a dog is, is, um, you know, for some reason it's just not working, working out. Um, they'll kind of recycle the dog to another class and they'll kind of try to get it through maybe one handler that can just, you know, pull up some magic and work with that dog better or whatever. And sometimes it does work. Actually, it does work most of the time. So mm, got to switch it, switch it up a little bit. Yeah. Switch it up a little <laughs> bit. Maybe it, the dog, the, the handler are not, you know, uh, bonding correctly. And mm. um, that's the last thing you want is the dog not wanting to work for the handler in the field, you know? So, uh, you do have to develop a bond and, and it has to happen pretty quickly because or else, you know, you're, you're not going to pass. Yeah, man. These days, just from like what I hear is or some of the pages and accounts and the different people I follow, like people, some people that are like immigration or or just different things like you just see you just see like, oh, a big fence and all bust. And like where I live in Houston, obviously, it's like a big distribution hub. Um, right. I mean, not not only for like human trafficking, but like drugs and everything else. You have all the highways and where right. stuff mo- where stuff moves around. So you hear about like, for one, you see you see the people hooked on fentanyl in certain areas in here in town, Harris County, or yeah. um, or you'll hear about like, oh, enough enough fentanyl has been has been recovered that could have killed half of Texas or. Yeah, like yeah. three three counties of people could have died off what we found in this one backpack or whatever. So it's almost like because of the advent 
of those new types of drugs and the way that whole marketplace is working, everything from like that being a new drug and, and to my knowledge, it's like new and the current state of the border and everything else, it's just like a recipe for destruction. Like oh, I just, I just, I just feel like our country, man, like they're whoever's responsible for all this, obviously cartels and other countries. Yeah. Um, it's it's it almost feels not to get too conspiratorial, but it feels like a, a straight up attack on our country because, you know, I'd hear like in history how in China they had like the opiate, the opiate war. I, I guess the British had the Chinese like a bunch of people hooked on opium and stuff. And it, it's just like it's super sad. Yeah, it really is. Um, it's unfortunate, to be honest, uh, you know, especially obviously I. I started working there because i i love my country you know mm -hmm. and um it, it is unfortunate to see the things that are unfolding and um and and it's it, if you paying attention just a little bit you see it almost happening every single day and and uh it, you can't even turn on the tv anymore you know when they're not trying to shove something down your throat or you know um and and yeah back to what you're saying is it feels like it's almost coming from internal. We're, you know, going to implode, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, we're doing it to ourselves. You know, uh, obviously there's going to be some puppet master mm -hmm. along the way, you know, uh, but uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. It, it's crazy, man. Um, um, actually, um, I don't know if you follow Anthony Cabasa uh, informed with Anthony. He he's he does like pretty much like journalism and like commentating on on like things going on in the world, politics right. and all that. Uh, but anyway, he used to be customs. OK, yeah, I, I got to I gotta follow him. I have no I, 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 I may have come across him, but maybe I, I don't know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send you I'll send you a link. Um, OK. Instagram and all that. He has a podcast as well, and I'm gonna have him on the show. So oh, I think nice. that, yeah, I think that episode might come out after yours. But uh, but anyway, yeah, that just came to mind. Like there, um, he also worked in custom, and like he he's told me stories of like stuff that he saw. I think they were like on boats or definitely the ports and things like that. Okay, so he might but, have been uh, at port or something like that. Maybe at some location like that. Yeah. So, hey, dude, we might have to do a photo shoot. Uh, I'm going to be in the, in the RGV again soon. Uh, okay. I'm, a, I'm actually going to be in uh, Brownsville and Alamo. Okay. Alamo, uh -huh. And that's coming up like 421 and 422. Um, okay. And, he, and of course, you know, hey, maybe we'll maybe we'll talk another collab. Like uh, my wife and I, we have a we have cafecito time and or and she has her own brand like with like her apparel she's got a whole bunch of different things going on but okay. uh if you're able to get like pink uh coffee bags or anything like that cool marketing like that i don't know if they make that or yeah, maybe like that, yeah mm -hmm. what, what i'll do is I'll, I'll i'll kind of find some stuff and send it over to you and you know you guys can look at that yeah or, or even like in the artwork on, on a on a white bag or, or black might even work but but anyway i don't want to jump the gun um yeah, right. I get you, but I'll, yeah. I'll I'll keep an eye out for maybe an idea that kind of goes that way. So uh, obviously, you sell a lot of coffee off your website. Is there any place like in the RGV? Like, do you do farmers markets or? I, I personally don't. Um, I, I, I we have three stores here in in McAllen that carry uh, my coffee, which is uh, the Health Nut uh, on Dove. It's right next to a Gold's Gym. So it's kind of cool. People go in there. Um, and I, I know the owner. He's actually a good buddy of mine. So it's kind of like, yeah, hey, man, put it in the store. I was like, all right, brother. I appreciate it. You know, uh, another store is called the Green Beret. It's always it's like a military surplus store. So, you know, it kind of goes with this whole theme and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Uh, another one in, in Edinburgh, actually, which is, you know, the next city over. Uh, it's called uh, Suppressed Tactical Solutions. They uh, it's a gun store. Uh, same thing. I, I know one of the owners from uh, he used to compete with us uh, shooting. So he, same thing. He's like, when when I got it going, he was like the first one, like, hey, let's put it in the store. I was like, oh, man, I appreciate it. You know, uh, so that was good. Uh, another store in Corpus. 
Uh, he's called uh, Redbeard Gunworks. Um, uh, also a gun store. Great guy. Uh, Kyle, the owner, is, is an amazing person. Uh, just a great, great human. Um, and we're working on getting two more pretty soon. I don't want to jump the gun and get too excited, but it looks like we got two more coming in that, that want to put our coffee in the store. That's so, awesome, man. Yeah, congrats, dude. Just, just oh, spreading. Yeah. That's pretty exciting. I got to work right now. Actually, I got to work on new displays. Uh, since we carry more now blends from the original, we only carried four in the beginning. Now we're, I, I can't even keep track of how many blends we got going on right now. But so I want to build a new display, uh, something that will be given to the stores. Like, hey, okay, man, just for carrying our coffee, here's a display. You guys don't put it wherever you want, corner, wherever, you know, you feel like it versus uh, my thing is I don't want to take up anybody's shelf uh, space. So uh, that's kind of where I, that's actually one of the next projects. Yeah, that, that reminds me of the, of the music business when, um, dude, it was super cool back in the day <clears throat> where we had these um, life size chingo bling cutouts of like me and my crazy, crazy outfits. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it'd be me doing a pose or something. And it was like cut out. I forget where we got them made, but like I had them in. Um, like one of our, like all our best stores. Like it was this one store in San Antonio and other spots like that. So people would walk in and it, it, looked, it looked like I was standing there. <laughs> that's, that's pretty, yeah. And it's a good eye catcher, you know? It's it's that eye catcher when you walk in the store. Yeah. That's, I, that's, uh, that actually, Kyle, uh, there at, at Redbeard in, in, in Corpus, he has it, our display right in the front. That's like the same thing as soon as you walk in. So that's cool. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, dude, too bad record stores don't exist anymore. <laughs> but but yeah, dude, that that's super cool. Like when you know the owner and they're letting you, they're like letting you do that because anything really big in corporate where you don't really have a, a relationship, it turns into just money, money, money. It's like oh, yeah. oh, you want to be on the end cap? Oh well, guess what? You thought you were making this percentage. It's like actually you have to like. You've got to cough up 500 bags of coffee, bro, just to be yep. at eye level on the end cap or whatever. It's like, oh. Yeah. Like. So, you know, I, I think uh, I had been sent an invitation to uh, submit my stuff to either H-E-B or Walmart. And I said, you know mm -hmm. what? I'm not ready for that. I, I would love the idea of it. But it, it's one of those things where I got to be realistic with myself. Am I ready for that? Mm -hmm you know, for that demand or, or just to be able to produce that because the moment you can't produce, you know, you're out, you know? And, and so me, I'm kind of focusing on my target audience, you know, uh, and uh, trying to get them always the product that they want, you know, versus let me just make a bunch of product. Uh, and the other thing is I don't want to lose quality. You know, uh, mm -hmm. we were going through quickly right at that. What was it last year? We were having a lot of supply chain issues with 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 coffee was ridiculous. Yeah, so I would go through the importer and it would take about normally about two weeks from the moment I order it, and it was taking up to two and a half months. So yeah, so you know I I they they, they would tell me hey we have this particular bean, we'll send you a sample and they'll send me like no, no because I, I'm not willing to sacrifice uh quality for just to get a product out and and then possibly lose customers in, in that sense because you know they're like hey man this doesn't taste like it used to or whatever the case may be mm -hmm. uh, i think that's i want i still want i still have a lot of working on that to do so before mm -hmm. I, I i want to get bigger than that yeah you know what i i def as we wrap up i definitely wanted to um um talk to you about that because like like on this show traditionally uh red pill tamales um we would cover cover things like geo uh oh you there okay still there yeah yeah i don't know what happened there oh wow yeah. okay M my bad so yeah so like geopolitical things that affect economics and just like global things like one country coughs the other one gets the flu type of thing and can yeah, you elaborate right. a little bit? Say what? Yeah. No, no, go ahead. Hello? 
I, I don't know why oh, okay. it's up here, but go ahead. Yeah, I thought it was like a lag. But anyway, could you elaborate a little bit on the nature of, like you were touching on right now, like the importation of coffee and supply chain issues and how all that crazy stuff is interconnected? Yeah, go off on that. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, you know, something that you would never think that would be affected uh, was definitely affecting us. On the plus side of things, for me personally, I can't speak for other businesses, but I know a lot of other businesses were going through the same issue, was I wasn't selling as much. So it kind of worked out, but it was very frustrating, I will say that. Um, and But I was, it gave me a good taste of what could happen in the event, you know, future events of, uh, let's say, you know, again, another, you know, uh, some kind of crisis happens in one country i know for a fact i need to start preparing for that uh for that cause because uh now that i do have more of a revolving door of of coffee coming in and out i i need to always have that not only for myself as a business but for my customers you know yeah in order to like know that you're able to deliver and to have a business that you're able to anticipate you know what yes. next next quarter yeah. or like am i gonna even have the beans or delays well that, the worst part about that was they wouldn't give you a time frame so it was one day to the next hey man i need x amount of beans okay but that was literally their answer okay and you're like uh <laughs> when can i expect this they're like you can expect it when when you get it kind of deal like there was no information it was it was like I said, it was very frustrating, uh, but at the same time, uh, it was a, a good eye opener for me sure. as a, a bus business owner, for sure. It was a good eye opener, um, but we're kind of through with that other than the prices going up and stuff like that, which is everything. Um, that's the other thing I need to anticipate as well is, is prices. Whenever there's a shortage or a crisis or anything, prices are going to go up. So I need to keep that in mind to be able to control costs because la for the last year prices went up i was eating the cost i was just like well you know it is what it is you know uh i'm i'm, I'm not gonna charge the, the customer for this because it's, it's nobody's fault you know but mm -hmm. uh it's not ours at least for, <laughs> yeah uh, but that was something that i i needed to anticipate also going back with with your collab since yours was more of a bougie uh coffee i said hey this one needs to be priced more Simply not because I, I'm charging you more or I want to charge your customer more. It's simply this bean does naturally cost more. And then plus the, 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 the raising, rising costs, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. Yeah. Did, did everybody oh, hear that? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Pre pre premium beans, ladies and gentlemen. The, el, el Red Pill Blend Carnal, directo del RGV, premium beans, uh, Grind Ops Coffee Co. So... So you already told us what stores you're in, but online, that's a great way. Because we do, we have listeners from all over the place. Uh, gracias a Dios. Uh, tell them your website and like just upcoming projects, just any information. So, uh, obviously, uh, we, we want anybody to go on our, our website, which is www.grindopscoffeecode.com. Um, I have a pretty exciting project that's close to me uh so we released our instant coffee uh what was it maybe a month ago or so uh which turned out to be a big hit which i did not anticipate whatsoever but uh i started playing around with it in my protein shake and so i really enjoyed it so right now i'm speaking to a protein manufacturer and so i'm trying to develop my own protein coffee protein coffee powder oh uh, yeah with high caffeine oh damn yeah so uh, you know it's kind of like yeah so yeah, it's kind of be you know you know your 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 20 times of uh way isolate uh then you know the instant coffee mixed in there with uh caffeine and so it's more of like a i'm i haven't even figured out the wording but uh more of a like a 
protein fueled by coffee, you know, so I, I haven't decided what, what I'm going to run with, but you get what mm-hmm. I'm going with. Uh, especially if, you know, that, for me in the morning, I hit the gym in the morning, but I always have a protein mm-hmm. shake in the morning. So I was like, I'm going to mix both worlds together right there and then. Excellent, um, man. So, yeah, that's that's one of my future projects that that I'm already working on. I'm pretty excited by it. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And, and I, you know, we'll, we'll take it from there. But oh, man, obviously, that's... you know, I, I looked around. I really didn't see too many many or too many companies. Cutting out. Ah, the nature of technology. As we're talking about freeze-dried technology, uh, it appears that Aaron's camera froze. I don't know if that's my Wi-Fi, but hey, that's that's what you get. It's a mixed bag. Um, we were up on time anyway. Let me see. Hello. And to be continued, the pinwheel of death. It's just a circle right there. But uh, hey, we're going to go ahead and let you guys go. Um, uh, I'm headed to Naples, Florida. Hey, you there, bro? There you are. Yeah, Yeah, technology. Yeah, Yeah, let's just do final words because it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Technology is awesome until it's not working, right? Um, Well, yeah, like I said, uh, that's definitely one of the projects I'm pretty excited about. I, I. I don't know how long it's going to take to, to finalize the product, but, uh, you know, I, I hope that whoever's listening can definitely visit our website. Uh, follow us on, on Instagram, Facebook, please. Uh, you know, that's our only source of marketing. We don't do any outside marketing. We don't do anything else, uh, at least for now, but I, I don't really anticipate it. Um, you know, we, we, we try to treat everybody. If somebody reaches out in the DMs, I, I, it's usually me responding. And I'm, I'm really good about responding. Um, so if anybody just wants to ask a question, just hit, me, hit up a DM. Uh, or feel free to contact us through our website as well. Uh, I'm, I'm always going to answer. Uh, if, I, if I don't know the answer to the question, I, I will get you an answer somehow or another. That's great, man. Hey, I appreciate your time. Uh, GrindOpsCoffeeCo.com. Pick up a bag of coffee. Um, help GrindOps Coffee grow. Uh, big things in the works, the uh, protein in the morning fueled by coffee, Aaron Meza. Thank you so much, brother. Um, we're looking forward to all that. And send him a DM. Uh, go show their Instagram page some love. Is it Grind Ops Coffee Co. on Instagram? It's Grind Ops uh, at Grind Ops underscore Coffee Co. There it is. Everybody go show them some love. Drop a comment. Let them know you heard them right here on Red Pill Tamales. I'm headed to Naples, Florida this Sunday. Hit up my website for tickets. uh, Odessa, Texas, March 11th. I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much, Aaron. I appreciate the love. Thank you. Have a great day. All right, y'all. Peace.